Um, hey, everyone. Um, thanks to everyone before me who did their thing really quickly, because now I can take my sweet ass time. Um, so yeah, my, my, that's my talk here. Um, quick introduction. My name's Wing. I'm a front-end developer. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about URLs today. Uh, so yeah, I have a whole bunch of slides here that basically boil down to like this one takeaway. So if you are just tuned out from lunch and you're like, oh, this is like the one thing that you can just walk away from this, which is basically to 301 your old URLs or your moved URLs. Uh, 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 yeah, so yeah. Sorry, I'm getting confused with my slides. Um, that's, yeah, the t title of the talk was up there, but like, if you kind of like squint and, and look more deeply, um, the subtitle just reads like URLs are forever, right? They're not actually forever, but we should like treat them as if they are forever. Because uh, like you could have a URL that you're saying, I'm serving this content off of this link or this URL. Uh, you're going to send that to someone, and that person's going to go on and send it in an email message, put it in a PDF or something, send that PDF around. Uh, so like these links, like URLs just last forever. Uh, and I've been saying the word URL for a lot, so like what, what is actually a URL? Um, I had to look this one up. It's called, it stands for Uniform Resource Locator. Uh, this is some examples of a URL. Uh, is there a laser thinking? Oh, there's a laser thinking. Um, yeah, example.com is my example domain that I've used for my example. Of course, um, yeah, this is also a URL. It's also a URL. Uh, and then Flublaga with a parameter thingy equals NDC. That's a URL as well. That's probably a 404, but you don't know until you actually visit this URL. Uh, there is a very good page on MDN if you want to learn more about the specifics of a URL. Uh, but that's like, just so that we're all on the same page, this is what I'm talking about when we say URL. Uh, and so let's just take an example at um, this URL here. Let's say that uh, you've just received a message from a friend, and, and in that message, it's like you, there's a link in it. It's like say dog.com forward slash wolves forward slash cutest puppy breeds. You, because you're a diligent citizen, you call up your friend and you're like, hey, did you just send me like a link or am I getting fished or is this some like dodgy thing? And they're like, what are you talking about, man? I just sent you some puppies. So you hang up on them. Uh, and then you go and check out this page. And you, you visit the page, and like up comes some puppies. Great. You love this page. Uh, you bookmark it. You save it to your home screen and your phone so that you can check out these puppies later. Uh, and, so, and then you send it to more people, and you're sharing this link around. Uh, and so one morning, you wake up. You're brushing your teeth. And you want to check out some puppies again. You go to the puppy sinks. Uh, and you click on that link, and like you get this page. So it's 404 not found. Um, that kind of leads into like the first tip, which is basically have like a better 404 page. Um, so instead of like giving a user something that looks like this, uh, you might want to do something that looks a bit more like this, where you've got like your design language coming through, you're using more your design system. Uh, you might have a like search box to try and give your users, oh, maybe you can try and look for the thing that we were looking for. Sorry, I don't have it for you, but maybe you can search for it. Um, th this is another example that you might be familiar with. It's like the one from GitHub, where they have like a little cute logo. And also, a bit hard to see, but there's a search bar as well um, on this page. Uh, and so when I was like putting these slides together, <laughs> it, uh, I was trying to like search up examples of 4 pages. And like if you put in example 4 pages into Google, or like some search engine, you won't get 4 pages. You'll get like examples of 4 pages. Example articles talking about examples of 404 pages. Um, because search engines don't want to index pages that are 404s. And so it's hard to, yeah, like that was a whole thing in its own. Um, actually, and on, on this one, I'll have a slide for this one as well. Um, when I was trying to look for like the GitHub one, uh, I was going to github.com and then I just put forward slash blah. Uh, and then I didn't get a four, I didn't get this 404 page. I just got like a page of like some username, or some user profile that had like blah on their name. Uh, and it turns out that, and, and so you're like, oh, okay, I need a 404 page. I have to put in another blah. Um, and I got another user profile. It turns out there's like nine levels of blahs, but people, users that have blah in their profile before you actually get the 404 page. And so like, that, yeah, I just kept going. I, I was curious after like three or four, I was like, oh, how far how deep does this go? Uh, and so yeah, um, that's 404 pages. Um, 
this one's like not quite the full four pages. Uh, it's, I think GitHub uses this for the um, timeouts or like the 500, 544 um, kind of errors. Uh, and so yeah, you just spruce up your four four page. Uh, if you have to serve nothing, serve something um, better than this one here. Oh, yeah, that one. Th that's also why you have like this janky resolution thing because like, I couldn't find an actual website that was running Nginx and it had this plain page. Uh, so it just had to, yeah. All right, enough of that. Um, so yeah, let's go back to our URL. Like what happened to our puppies? Like has someone taken a hos puppy's hostage? Uh, and so like what actually happened here in our uh, contrived example is that the owners of dog.com, uh, they sat down with like a bunch of their users, a bunch of their reader, reader base, uh, and turns out like nobody had any, any idea what the hell a wolf's was. Turns out wolf's was like the URL for their blog. And so um, they're like, okay, let's just be more serious. We'll put like blog in the actual URL. Uh, and so like the puppies actually still existed. They just moved it to this new URL under blogs. Um, and so that's like the next thing, which is in software, like nothing is actually forever. You can't actually have, or you can't predict every single outcome that's ever going to happen. Uh, and so if we can't promise that URLs are going to be forever, forever, uh, we take like our next, the best thing, next best thing that we can do is to just 301 it. Uh, so 301 is, stands for, not stands for, it's like a HTTP status code um, that you can use to say, hey, uh, I've got this odd resource that you seemingly try to access on this thing. Uh, here's the location for the new thing. Like, we've, it's been moved, it's been shifted. And so we're just trying to like close a gap on this information asymmetry between us as like the author or you as, as the author and your users. So it's like you know the previous and the new location, but your users only have the previous location. So like help them get from that old URL up there down to like the blog, or like the new URL. Uh, Next step is instead of like putting everything on root, group similar pages together. So what I mean by that is like on my example that I've used, I've just conveniently prefixed this stuff with woofs or blogs or something um, to try and like group pages together. Um, what grouping stuff does is uh, it just helps you migrate stuff like a little bit easier if you do have to move stuff. Um, so instead of having to like have a mapping of every single one of your old URLs, you can just say, hey, I'm going to rewrite all of my URLs that have like woofs in them to blog. Um, this is not always going to be possible. You're not going to be able to like, group all sorts of pages or like every single thing, but if you can anticipate something like this or, or just generally group stuff, um, that's another way that you can do it with your URLs. Uh, and so there's this whole bunch of like other use cases for actually needing to change your URLs. Uh, you could be going through some like website revamp or like app restructure. You might be building a new feature. It might be shortening URLs. Um, not just say, oh, I'm not renaming anything, I'm just trimming it. So from our awesome blog to like our blog or blog, that's still a new URL. Your computer is not going to magically know where this new thing is, so you still need to tell it. Um, and you just might be like adding or removing metadata in your URLs. Let's say that you have like the year and the month in your blog and you're like, ah, uh, don't like it. Or you do want to have it and you're just putting it in. You're changing the URL. Uh, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, I've got a single page app. Like, I don't need URLs. Um, if you're thinking that, you probably have some work to do when you come back to the office. Because uh, you probably have like different screens or different pages within your single page app. You've got more, multiple pages in your single page thing. Um, so you don't want to have your address bar showing dog.com the, the whole time if you have individual pages or like, distinct screens that your users will be using. Um, so, and, and that's like the next tip. You can just store UI state into your URL. Um, uh, you could be doing a search page and you just say, hey, I want to put in NDC. And then you want to share that URL to, or th that search result page to someone else. Uh, they're going to need to have like the query that you have run. Uh, a real life example is the uh, agenda for this conference on ndcmelbourne.com. If you go to the agenda and you like change the day of the filter at the, at the top, um, that gets reflected in your URL. And so when you share that URL, you're like, oh, look, the Friday agenda looks really good. And you copy that and you share that. Um, the person that you, on the receiving end is going like, to load up that page. It's going to go to the Friday agenda uh, immediately. Um, a good like, mental model or, or like, a lens that you can put on this to try and think about what you would put in your URL is imagine that your browser crashes. Hopefully not because of your app or your website. Um, but when a browser crashes, like, what it does is it tries to restore like, all the pages that you're on 
And uh, the way it does that is like it has the URL at the time that you, it crashed and just loads that up again. So if you were you, you like building your own app you know, or website and you're thinking, okay, if my browser crashed, what what I need to restore my app or UI to the state that it uh, was at the time. Uh, next thing is have analytics for your four fours, and so like you're not going to be able to capture every single um, old URL or, or just like four four in general. Um, so this like is another way that you can kind of surface that data and like figure out what um, missing gaps that you might have uh, in terms of uh, uh, your old URLs. So, like you might have like millions of people trying to access this one page. Uh, you're like oh forgot about that. Uh, I'm not going for time. Okay. Uh, I have some other bonus things to watch out for, uh, something called rel equals canonical, uh, and something called like dangling DNS, which I don't need to go into anymore because uh, Kieran's covered it in extensive detail. Um, so I'll spend a bit more time on this one, which is like rel equals canonical. Uh, it's like some metadata for you um, uh, specifying that, oh, hey, I've got a page here. You've probably reached it or it's accessible by a whole bunch of different um, URLs. You might have like dog.com for slash creatures puppy breeds, and then you might have like a mobile subdomain where you're serving that same page because uh, mobile subdomains are cool again. Um, you might have like some group or theme or a thing prefixed or even an ID, right? But they're all like the same page. Uh, and if you have content that's like the same page, you generally don't want to um, serve it off different URLs without this like relical canonical. Like metadata, because like what search engines do when they see, oh, you've got four pages, um, you just like, trying to put a crap into our index. It's all the same content. Um, this kind of like picks one page that or you can like direct it to say, hey, this is the, the canonical page for uh, what I'm trying to search uh, serve to you here. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just skip that because don't need to do that. So yeah, off the top again, um, have a four four page, better four four page. Uh, try to group similar pages together. Um, store your, your UI state in your URL if you um, need it, or, or if you have that use case. Uh, get some analytics, relicals canonical, and uh, keeping in mind the dangling DNS scenario. Um, yeah, obligatory hiring thing. If you go to atlassian.com forward slash careers, that itself is a 301 to like the full <laughs> URL. Um, and that's just got like a whole bunch of um, open roles that Alexians are hiring for uh, all across Australia. Um, yeah, so let's have a bit more love for our URLs, uh, and that's all I have for you today. Thanks very much.